Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I'm getting ready to leave you for the last weekend in March. Can you believe it? And we're also doing so with a forecast that by all accounts has barely been tweaked and adjusted at all since I saw you last. I literally could have used last night's forecast to go into tonight's program, which means we're talking about a weekend ahead. Uh, clear and cold for the first half, clear and not so cold for the second half, and then temperatures climbing next week, but with that, a bit of a back and forth with sun, clouds, rain, and so forth. So we'll tell you more about that. A bit of a repeat, but it's not a bad thing weather-wise. Controversy surrounding a decision last night post the Sagittal City Council as to whether or not to annex several businesses on Route 114 into the city limits. We'll cover that as well as other happenings in the media. A couple of other follow-ups pertaining to a few appeals. Some information that I have to relate to you and a whole lot more that I'm going to try to work in to what's left of the next half hour. So let's get to it and begin with a state report which is aimed to help a lot of Kentucky counties like McGoffin and others in the viewing area, for example, which have been so hard hit by the downturn in the coal industry. Our governor today, Governor Bashir, joined several other state as well as federal officials to announce the Partnerships for Opportunity and Workforce and Economic Revitalization Initiative, POWER for short, which will award up to $38 million in grants to coal communities to support economic and workforce development. The POWER initiative, as has been dubbed, is designed to effectively utilize a range of federal economic and workforce development resources to assist communities negatively impacted by the downturn of coal and energy production. It's going to award grants using 28 to $38 million a year in fiscal year 2015, funds from that year from the Department of Commerce, Labor, SBA, and ARC. And it's my understanding that the grants will be competitively awarded to applicants, which will include state agencies, local governments, and stakeholders anchored in coal communities to develop and implement strategic plans that will go to diversify economies, create jobs in new or existing industries, attract new sources of job-creating investments, and provide a range of workforce services and skills training that offer industry-recognized credentials for high-quality, in-demand jobs. Grant applications are tentatively set to be announced in April and May. And also tagging along on that report in coordination with today's power announcement, USDA Administrator Lillian Salerno announced approval of a $1.8 million loan for a new innovative business in Eastern Kentucky. Kentucky Dairy Product Innovations is a health and wellness beverage business headquartered in London. It's going to become the first U.S. producer of low-calorie, lactose-free skim milk. And using the low-calorie, lactose-free skim milk, the company has also created a new carbonated and flavored dairy product called Fizza that has been approved for sale at middle and high schools across the country. Get a taste, I guess. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet recently awarded five contracts totaling nearly $2.8 million for eight highway projects within the Department of Highways District 10 area, which includes a great bit of the viewing area. Uh, $270,000 project to um, for safety and site distance improvements on a little more than a half mile of US 460 in Morgan County. A $1.1 million project to make improvements about 11 and a half miles of Kentucky 772 in Morgan County. A $47,000 resurfacing project for Licking Avenue, that's Kentucky Route 2493 in McGoffin County. And a $1.2 million project for uh, painting center and edge line stripes in all 10 counties. A lot of roads need that, especially after the winter that we had with all of the snow and rain and, of course, the grading that was done on the roadways. And $83,000 for resurfacing of about a mile and a quarter of Kentucky 2023 Camp Judy Lane Road in Menifee and Morgan Counties. The Paceville Herald had a report today in its Friday edition talking about an appeal that has been filed on behalf of a group of interested parties as it relates to the school tax in Johnson County, which was finally passed but now is in a bit of limbo. The paper says that a group of local citizens filed an appeal to Circuit Court Judge John David Preston's recent ruling on a move by the Johnson County Board of Education to raise taxes for county property owners. The appeal, which was filed behalf, on behalf of Johnson County Court Clerk Sally Holbrook through a committee of individuals who earlier circulated a petition calling for a special election on the tax issue was filed in Johnson Circuit Court Tuesday of this week, the paper said. The appeal kind of doesn't really say one way or the other, obviously, as to whether or not tax bills that have already been sent out, if they are to be mailed back in, or if they are to be put in limbo, 
it's just unspecified at this point, but back in September, we do know that members of the Johnson County Board of Education voted to increase the school tax from 38.1 cents per $100 of every per every $100 of property valuation up to 45.3 cents. A petition committee gathered more than 1,800 signatures, put them together, and requested a special election be held on the issue. In February, though, Judge Preston ruled in favor of the Johnson County Board of Education, determining that, that petition was invalid and not legal, and thus, of course, putting off a special election. That ruling does give the Johnson County Board of, election, of Education, my apologies, the right, though, to collect the extra tax that it imposed in September without waiting for the appeal. However, should the appellate, appellate court rule in favor of the petition committee, money collected through a second tax bill would be subject to refund. Once again, still unclear. The appeal process could take up to six months before it's all ironed out. Well, depending on exactly when they started their clock, if you will, the Kentucky Court of Appeals was allowing a window of 20 days for briefings to be filed on behalf of all three parties as it pertains to the election appeal, the case filed on behalf of John Montgomery versus the McGoffin County Board of Elections and Charles Doc Harden. Earlier this month, as I had reported, the appeals court had stated that they had received all appeals on behalf of all three parties. Charles Doc Harden filing an appeal of special appointed judge John David Preston's decision to vacate his office, as well as an appeal on behalf of the McGoffin County Board of Elections, and John Montgomery filing a cross appeal, also appealing the decision handed down by Preston, still urging that he be declared the victor in the November election. All those documents were received with the Court of Appeals, and as I told you at last report, they gave each of the entities, each of the parties involved, 20 days to get their briefs submitted to the appeals court and immediately upon receiving those they will be forwarded to a three judge panel for their consideration that 20 days is up I, at depending on when they started their clock if you will either today or technically on tomorrow's date i did place a call into the kentucky court of appeals just before coming in to the newsroom they said that they had to had just looked before closing time to make sure as they were expecting something to be in as well but at that time at close of business hours for them today. They hadn't received anything on the matter. It's expected we'll have an update possibly to some degree at the first of next week. I've got more headlines to come though, so stay tuned. Your news today will be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. A whole lot of things happening on tonight's community calendar and a lot of other announcements about a lot of upcoming events. And I'll tell you about those in just a second, as I will city council coverage in just a few moments. But first, an update on former Morgan County Judge Executive Tim Conley, who will be spending his fourth night in federal prison this evening in another state as he begins to serve at least 85% of his seven-year, three-month term which is shorter than the 11 years that he held the office of Morgan County Judge Executive. Conley did, however, report to the Federal Correctional Institution in Beckley, West Virginia, earlier this week on Tuesday after he pled guilty to one count of mail fraud and was sentenced to 87 months in prison. Also, a part of that sentencing was that he pays restitution back in the amount of $130,000, $126 to the Transportation Cabinet, rather $104 to the Transportation Cabinet, and $26 to McGoffin County itself. It's a medium security facility, that being the Federal Correction Institution in Beckley, it sits some 50 to 60 miles outside of Charleston to the south. Of course, this case also centered around the Gambles of McGoffin County and their construction company, both of which pled guilty and agreed to cooperate with authorities, both of which were sentenced to house imprisonment, as well as other stipulations per their plea agreement. Before I get to calendar announcements this evening, I've got a whole lot of announcements that would go right along with the calendar, but I'm going to read those to you right now because a lot of them just came in. We want to make sure we get them on tonight's program and a few others that I'll remind you of that are a little farther down the road. There's a circus in town this weekend here in McGoffin County. I got an announcement. It appears to have come from the McGoffin County Judge's Office just earlier this afternoon. It says kids are free. It means your kids get in free. You don't get to go 
get a free kid, but kids are for, get in for free at the Star Family Circus with your favorite characters, aerialists, jugglers, acrobats, daredevils, and it's all this Sunday at the Lloyd M. Hall Community Center in Sagersville. Showtimes are 3 and at 6. $12 for adults, students 13 to 17 are just $6 to get in, and kids younger are, like I said, free. The circus in is in town this Sunday, 3 and 6 at the Community Center in downtown Sagersville. And I like this idea a lot. And we'll be talking about it more. It's a kickoff event, though. It's not until April the 6th, but I thought I'd go ahead and put it out there now. They are having the first event of the McGoffin County Rail Trail Crew. They're going to be having weekly biking and hiking events on the Dawkins Trail. And they'll begin at the Royalton Trailhead on the Dawkins Trail line. For more information, you can contact Carolyn Isaac at the Health Department at 349-6212. Their first event is set for April the 6th. They're giving away a bike, free t-shirts, a live DJ even for the event. It's two hours, April the 6th put together by the Rail Trail crew, and they want you to be a part of their crew, sponsored by the United and Safe Coalitions. I'll be glad to remind you about that, and I bet there's a story in there somewhere before, during, and after that event. And this one comes up for early next week for McGoffa County Schools. It's that time of year again to grab your hat and read with the cat during McGoffa County Schools Read Across America Celebration. Students in the Gifted and Talented Program have put together an entertaining program featuring puppet shows, music, song, and dance, along with special guests. And these events are set for the following days next week. North McGoffin Elementary is Tuesday at 1. Sagersville Grade School Celebration is Wednesday at 1. And then South McGoffin's is Thursday at 9 a.m. A lot of good reading and fun to be had during those days, I'll remind you, as they go along throughout next week. South McGoffin Elementary's kindergarten registration runs April the 6th through the 17th. A reminder on that, and that's about all I have time for reminders this evening. Now it's gone over to go on over to calendar announcements, but all brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau, which still starts off with a plea as it did last night, hoping that someone out there can help these folks find their lost pet. A McGoffin County family is looking for their lost pet, which may as well be a part of the family and is a part of the family to them. And this dog has been missing since Monday of this week. And they say if someone who's maybe picked it up thinking it was lost or anything, no questions asked. They just want their beloved pet back. Uh, they live on Route 7 on Long Creek. He said he could have been seen on Salt Lake, Punchin, Whitley, uh, David, or the 114 area. 884-5077-5077. If you see the dog or you need the number at a later time, call me. We'll get you in contact with him. But a lost pet in that portion of McGoffin County, and the owner is desperately searching for it. A reminder, the Easter Bunny is making an early stop in McGoffin County tomorrow at the Extension Service, and you can have breakfast with him. That's right, bunny pancakes, sausage, and a drink with a picture as well afterwards. And it's all at the Extension Office tomorrow morning, 9 to 1130. First annual McGoffin County Relay for Life Easter 5K is in the morning. It's going to be a little cool, but it's going to be a nice day for the run. They'll register at 9 in the Ramey Park in Sagersville. They'll race at 10. The first 100 participants get some cool little bunny ears to wear, and they've also got some nice gift cards for their top finishers. This is tomorrow, brought to you by the Funyuns Extension Homemakers Club. And a meeting set for this Tuesday is for all McGoffin County farming producers or vendors are trying to establish a farmer's market in this area and they need your help if you're interested or have any input it's tuesday at 6 p.m at the mcgoffin county extension office a reminder 4-h camp has been set for later on in june 16th through the 20th and the extension service wants to remind you that scholarships and payment plans are available so you can start making plans for 4-h camp today call 349-3216 when you had time and you have a question and please call me anytime you've got a calendar announcement for your church or organization or what have you, or a birthday and an, or an anniversary. We'll put them on and tell everyone about it. Remember, you can always get those information, get that information to us any way you so choose, and you can always catch your news today on Foothills Broadband Howard's Cable and yournewstoday.com. I'll be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions. 
or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Sagersville City Mayor Pete Shepard says the city would lose about $3,500 per month in income in employee tax alone if the newly constructed McGoffa County High School were not annexed into the city limits. He says couple that with the fact that the school system wants to be included in the city limits as it is now and that the city can only grow and thrive if it annexes businesses on the parkway into their territory and that the state won't allow annexation of the school just out there by itself. The city has only one option, he says, as he presented to the council and to an audience last night, and that is to annex everything in between from the existing Sagersville city limits now to the new McGoffa County High School on both sides of Route 114. And traveling west towards Sagersville, that would start at the eye clinic there, the man optometrist, and then go towards Sagersville. All businesses, no residences are proposed in the annexation, but all businesses therein, some of which, of course, will be taken by the road expansion, like Don's Superlube on this particular side of the roadway, but all businesses all the way down to Mi Hacienda. Mi Hacienda already in the Sagersville city limits, but all businesses between from the man, opto man optometrist to Mi Hacienda would be annexed into the city limits of Sagersville, which end at Mi on that side of the road. Now, traveling east on the other side of the road, the car wash is the last thing in the city limits there. From there, Vision Quest, Save-A-Lot, Red's Boot Barn, the storage rentals, all businesses, I know I'm leaving out some, but all these businesses would be annexed under the proposal that was brought before the Sagersville City Council, one that's been discussed for quite some time. They do have the option of taking in only businesses and not residences, and that what that is what their plan is to do. That's what they voted on last night, the same plan that's been discussed for well over a year now, or maybe even years, and the same plan that some landowners who will hear from at the meeting, as you will hear from in just a few moments, have also voiced their concerns since the original annexation plans were announced. Those landowners, which will have to pay more in property taxes, while employees will see a portion of their check go to the city as well. Let me ask you, what's the idea of this? What, what's, what are you trying to do to this? We're trying to uh, expand the city and make it more money for the city. Okay, do you understand that uh, McGoffin taxes as high as any in Kentucky? Yes, I do. Well, there are the coal businesses. Have you heard what the coal, co I mean, uh, Frankfurt's going to do to us? about our coal service tax money that we're not producing anymore? Yes, I know exactly. They're going to double our taxes, our land taxes. Mm, that'd be up to the county to do that. The state's no, the, state the, one, the state's the ones are doing it because they're not getting any coal service money to go back down to there. Why is the time, and a Continental is, going, a Continental is a short timer, why is the time to pick on us at the time like this for? And we're, we're, we're as high as anywhere in the state and nothing going on. I can't understand you. It's what you're trying to do to us, people. Well, trying to make the city better and bigger. I'm well, sell the lot right, right over here and pay your dead off or do what the man says right there. That man's got an ideal. He's the one who ought to be up front. If you don't need it, instead of picking on us when time's hard, the oil and gas business is gone and all the coal's gone, and now you're going to the school here that's done this. They claim they're out of money this week. Hey, what's going to happen? How are we going to do it? And nothing going on. Well, they ain't going to argue with you, but we're losing the high schools going up in that area. We're losing coal severance money. We're losing over $15,000 in our own money from the coal severance. We lost 25000 for our fire department last year in coal severance. We lost 65000 for my health department last year in coal severance. So I feel for you, and I agree. But sometimes you got to move on. Our truck's not required to go out of city limits. Our police officer's not required to go out of city limits. If somebody calls and you're out of city limits, they go. You know, I have no problem with that. We're giving you services. And let me tell you what, if you'll check with your insurance company, and if we write a letter to the insurance companies from this city saying we will not go out of the city limits, your fire rates will double. They will double, or triple. 
Now, and, and I've already talked to the insurance companies about this, so I do know what I'm talking about on this. Well, we'll get, we'll but we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to give you the service. And I want to give you the service where I, you are in the city or not. I don't care. That's fine. That's, I ain't got a problem. I'm just trying to do what's best for the city. The people elect me the mayor do what's best for the city. I feel this is what's best for the city. And if the city council feels it's what's best, they can vote. And if they don't vote, then we'll stay just like we are. But I'll tell you what will happen to the people of the city. People of the city is going to have to pick it up. And we'll have to raise our taxes too. The majority of the meetings centered around discussion about the proposed annexation. That discussion in and of itself probably lasted the better part of an hour or so. Finally, though, it did come down to a vote before the city council, and the vote came down to a final vote or tally of four to two. We got a motion second. Roll call for a boy. Or yes. Kevin Williams. Yes. Tom yes. Bailey. Yes. Tom Frazier. Yes. Jeff Bailey. Yes. Dex Holbrook. No. Marianne Hurt. No. Or Ward. <laughs> no, all right, we have a four to two, uh, motion carries. In a separate discussion, which actually took place earlier on in the meeting, Sagersville Mayor Pete Shepard wished to thank Mr. Paul Lines and Mr. Brad Lines of Mineral Labs for a very gracious donation, one of several to the Sagersville city government over the past few years. That's a $48,000 Camaro for the police department. That makes the fourth one in fourth vehicle in four years over a hundred thousand dollars so uh you know very appreciative it's a uh, pretty nice car we need it we need it that, that's uh our we got uh, very nice very nice so like i can say it's over a hundred thousand dollars worth of police equipment uh mineral labs paul lines and brad lines have donated in the last four years so we really do appreciate that and i was going to bring that up to my mayor's report on that so thank you some other items discussed before I close out coverage in financials, the city and all of its accounts, general fund, LGA, municipal road fund, and a few others has about $244,000 uh, in accounts to date. Uh, it also is operating under budget by compared to last year at this time uh, to the tune of having some excess funds when they were about 2000 above or over budget at this time last year. Council person Marion Ward brought some complaints that she had received about unmarked police cars, wishing to see them uh, emblazoned with Sagittal City Police emblems, as well as questioning about the possibility of having handicapped parking spots established in the Ramey Park, which everyone thought was a good idea and something just had not been thought of uh, in the history of the park. And, of course, they don't have designated parking spaces uh, per se, but they, it is something that they said that they would look into doing. Also, the mayor briefly addressed littering in his closing remarks, asking anyone who saw anyone littering to please call the Sagittal City Hall or Sagittal City Police Department and promise that it would be dealt with as it's just an ongoing problem and nuisance that they have and we have in the city of Sagersville. He mentioned the Civil War reenactment coming up on the April 10th, the 11th, and 12th. He briefly touched on the road fund and that they lost $10,000 last year. And, of course, it's a similar problem that other cities and counties are facing one that I've addressed on a couple of other fronts here on in the program over the course of the past several weeks. And real quickly, going back to the annexation, it's my understanding that after it was voted and approved last night by that vote of four to two, it will require a second reading before it can be reenacted. Now, that gives me just a few more moments to put the lid on things and wrap this show up tonight for the weekend. 53 degrees today. We'll fall back 30 to a low of 23 degrees tonight, becoming partly cloudy skies later on this evening. Just uh, pretty much well, somewhat below average night, followed by another below average day tomorrow temperature-wise. I don't think we'll get out of the 30s. We'll get close, but no cigar. Mostly sunny skies on your Saturday. Clear skies late north-northwest wind around 5 miles per hour. And check out the low, <laughs> 17 degrees. Thought we were done with that, didn't you? Never in Kentucky. Certainly not in eastern Kentucky as well. But Saturday is going to be on the colder side of things. Clear but cold. We'll rebound Sunday, 53, 42, sunshine. And then look what happens late Sunday night. Clouds start to increase. A 50% chance of showers, mainly after 11 Sunday night. So the day on Sunday, start to finish, 
as far as daylight hours are concerned, should be pretty decent. Now, Monday, temperatures will increase. We'll see 57, partly sunny skies. We'll see a 30% chance of showers. That's mainly before 11 a.m., then just partly cloudy thereafter, and a low of 40 degrees. Things getting much more mild and about where they should be, but they continue to get better as far as conditions are concerned. Tuesday of next week, mostly sunny, 64, a few clouds Tuesday night with a low of 43 degrees. My graphics will catch up with me in just the click or two of the mouse here in just a second. And then on Wednesday, we'll even go further than that. So 64 on Tuesday, the upper 60s, Wednesday and Thursday. With that, we'll also see some clouds, some sun, and some showers for a couple of days thereafter. But definitely starting to look more like the season after this weekend's 17-degree low, that is. And then, of course, next week we'll have more of an Easter forecast for you. And that'll wrap it up for this evening. I hope I see you back here next time after a wonderful weekend and a big cat win. Thank you all for being a part of the program, and good night.